Today I'm going to show you what's inside of your car's air acoustic induction system and how it works. Now in most naturally aspirated vehicles, air is going to start at the air intake here, go through the air filter, the throttle body, the intake plenum, and then the intake manifold, and then into the engine. Now in order to optimize that airflow, Toyota has implemented the acoustic air induction system located on this side of the engine. Now it's responsible for reducing intake noise, increasing efficiency and power, especially at lower RPM. Now in this vehicle, the actuator is inside of the intake plenum and it's controlled through this vacuum diaphragm that gets controlled by the vacuum manifold. Now if you listen carefully here at idle, you can tell that there's a slight noise that's coming from the air intake area when I actuate this guy and that's the noise that's getting cancelled out at lower RPM. Now here we have the entire air intake system removed from the vehicle, starting here with the air box. Now that's not very interesting, so I'll just put it on the side. We're going to focus on the throttle body over here. We have the air intake plenum, which is this piece here, and the acoustic air intake actuator located over here. And all of that's connected to this vacuum manifold. Now the ACE system is pretty straightforward. We just have this little mechanism here that moves the flap inside of the intake plenum. It's controlled by this rod here which connects to this little diaphragm. And this diaphragm is controlled by this vacuum. And if you follow this vacuum line, it comes up to this vacuum switching valve, which is what the ECU will use to control the amount of vacuum and thus how much that flap opens inside of the intake plenum. I'm going to first start disassembly by removing the throttle body off this intake plenum so we can have a look inside. Now the throttle body has two other vacuum controlled diaphragms here. It's going to disconnect that and pull off this throttle body. Now this air intake does use a dual throttle body design, but as far as the ACES system, you can't really see too much from this side. Now one way to tell if this vacuum diaphragm is good is if you put your finger on it and it holds vacuum. Now I'm just going to unbolt the nuts from this side here so we can have a look at the flap. And you can see there's the flap. This thing is really dirty. Now if we take a look inside, you can see just how gummed up with carbon this is. This here is where the PCV valve connects and you can see just inside of there how much oil it actually spits back into your air intake. So I'm just going to come in with some carb cleaner here and see what I can take off so we can have a closer look. Look how much carbon is on this side. I'm also going to spray this guy down. Use my brother's old t-shirt here to wipe it up. Now here we've got the heart of the ACES system. It's got this flap in the middle here. Kind of looks like a throttle body, but normally it's open like this at idle and it sits upright perpendicular to the direction that it gets inserted into the air intake plenum. Now taking a look inside the air intake plenum, since this vehicle has dual throttle bodies, they each lead up to one bank of cylinders. So the top one here is going to lead up to the front bank over here, and the bottom one here is going to lead up to the rear bank of three cylinders down here. Now if you consider when the ACES valve is installed in here, its valve is going to be sitting perpendicular to this ceiling face, which means that when the air is coming in here, it has to go around that valve and then come back down and then go into the cylinders, potentially also mixing with the cylinders below it and vice versa. That's going to create a longer air intake path because the air has got to travel up over that valve and then back down again before going in. Now at a preset RPM, the ECU is going to apply vacuum to this diaphragm causing this valve to close. Now when the valve is closed, the top and the bottom halves of this plenum are going to be completely separated from each other and the air can freely move from its throttle body into this plenum directly into its three cylinders. So here I've got this diagram to clarify. You can see as the air comes in, it has to go around that valve and then go back into the intake plenum. So this is technically a longer path for the air to travel, whereas at higher RPM with the valve closed, the air just goes zips by and goes into the intake plenum. Now the advantage to having the ACES plate here sitting perpendicular at lower RPMs is it's going to give the air intake a longer path to travel before it goes into the engine. Now by optimizing the runner length, sound waves that are coming from further down are going to clash with waves that are going in, reducing the amount of sound that you get from the engine at lower RPM, hence the term acoustic air induction system. Now the other benefit of having a longer runner length is that it's going to help the air to accelerate as it goes further down the air intake plenum. That's going to promote fuel mixing and thus efficiency and give you a little bit more lower end power. Now just like a throttle body, this has two screws here that I can remove. Now if I remove this throttle valve, you can see what we have. Now I'm going to chop this diaphragm open to see what's inside. And you can see what's inside here. We have this giant spring that was giving the feedback to this little actuator. You can see it's no longer spring loaded. And we have the cap over here that has the nipple for the vacuum. And here we've got the rubber membrane that holds the vacuum in place once it's applied. Now the ACES system should not be confused with the variable intake runner length system found on more modern vehicles. Instead of being powered by a vacuum motor, it's going to be powered by an electric motor, which is more variable. So you can see at lower RPM, the air is going to start at the throttle body and take a much longer loop into the intake compared to at higher RPM, 
where it's just going to go directly air into the intake. It's not just a flap moving around inside bothering the airflow. Now newer vehicles have a tumble flow actuator which is a series of flaps right before it goes into the engine head and that's going to be infinitely variable through this motor here and it's going to encourage the flow to tumble a little bit for better mixing of air and fuel just before it goes into the valves and into the engine. Now this Honda J series intake it's a little bit different. We have the throttle body that brings in air on the outside here before getting sucked down in the middle. We have this electric motor here that controls the ACES system which controls this flap over here and that's going to control the cross flow between each side. Now we'll take a quick look at some of the other technology on the throttle body side of things. Starting here with this little check valve that just screws out. Whoa, you can see there's so much sludge on there. You Make sure you change your oil guys because this is nasty. That's not even a check valve, it's just a through valve. A connection point for a vacuum to go into this part of the throttle body. Now the throttle body is responsible for controlling the amount of air that goes into the air intake plenum. So air is going to enter inside of here and be controlled by the two butterfly valves in there. This is a drive-by cable throttle so it's just directly linked to the pedal. Now there is a diaphragm here that ultimately controls the stopping point of where the throttle closes and it's also vacuum actuated. If you follow its vacuum line it just goes around in behind this butterfly valve over here. So the idea being the more vacuum you have in the air intake, the more this is going to move inward changing the idle position. Now that's interesting because it only happens over here on this side of the throttle body but on this side of the throttle body there's an electronically controlled idle air intake valve which allows the ECU to control its own idle. Now it's basically a bypass that sits in between this butterfly valve inside of here to allow air to bypass it and go through there into the engine only at idle though it's not that big enough to allow lots of air to go in for you to rev the engine. And here we have the throttle position sensor so as this little flat piece moves with the butterfly valves, this little sensor is going to turn telling the computer how far you've mashed the pedal. And here's a look at what's inside the throttle position valve. You can see as I turn this here, this membrane here that holds these two contacts are going to turn and that's going to change its resistance as they contact here so it kind of acts like a potentiometer to tell the computer exactly where the throttle is. And you can see inside of here we have another mechanism. So if you look inside of the air intake you can see that there's yet another valve that controls the amount of airflow between the left side and the right side. So I guess it completely can lock up or it can be open in the idle position like this to allow air to transfer in between the two. Now this is actually controlled by this other vacuum diaphragm which connects to that vacuum manifold we saw earlier. And if I check the pressure here you can see when I release my finger that it flips back to its spot. So that's pretty cool. You've got your regular butterfly valves that are separated for your throttle bodies. And then you have this other one in between here for the cross flow. And of course these bolts are always stripped out. They never want to open up. So I'm going to have to find another means to get this off. And with all those bolts grinded off, I'm just going to remove this throttle body. Got one over here and one over here but this one's connected to the throttle linkage and here's what we got on the back side of the throttle body here's where the actuator is this is going to move up and down and if we look inside of here you can see how that moves that valve taking a look at this throttle body this is where the cable comes from your accelerator pedal or your cruise module and it's going to move this linkage here to move that butterfly valve now this throttle body is so sticky probably needs a little cleaning up it should be able to return from the spring pressure alone this is going to come in with a little bit of carb cleaner here and use my wife's old toothbrush here to scrub this down to see if it's going to make any difference. And that's so much snappy already, so make sure you clean your throttle body again. And this is the other throttle body, you can see that it's also full of carbon. Just going to clean it up. My wife's old toothbrush here once again. So much carbon build up in these because of the PCV system. Stuff just starts building up, causing things to stick. Pull off the idle air control valve. Yeah, and just like the ACES valve, if I remove this diaphragm here, you can see that it's got the same kind of rubber material with that return spring. Now the idle air control valve has these little metal plates inside and that's going to interface with this magnet on this needle of the idle air control valve and that's going to allow some of the air to pass over from this side to this side of the throttle body according to what the computer thinks is ideal for the vehicle to idle. Inside the idle air control valve we have this giant coil and all of these metal plates here that's going to generate an electromagnetic field to suck in and out this magnet on the idle air control valve. Now the vacuum switching valve is just a solenoid inside that's going to allow air that's traveling in here to exit and come out here when actuated with 12 volt. And here's a look inside the idle air control valve. You can see that this valve here is going to control the flow between this side and this side here corresponding to the front side and the back side of the throttle body. And that's pretty much all the components in the air induction acoustic system in your car. Boy do these throttle bodies and air intake systems get really dirty so make sure you clean them out periodically. 
Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to see more videos just like this one.